Good morning, good afternoon, hello everybody. Welcome to King's Quest Mask of Eternity. Any percent speed run, no rules, just right, glitchy as all get out. Um, let's get started. Oh, yep, yeah, time starts on selecting easy difficulty. We're not gonna do a lot of fighting anyway. All right, uh, plot of this game, not too complicated. Uh, our guy Connor here realized that all of his best friends in Daventry turned into rocks. Uh, he found this big hunk of gold medal, and he will be off on this great adventure. So first things first, we do have to talk to a wizard about getting some exposition, figuring out exactly what's going on. We're gonna make a quick pit stop to this mausoleum here. Um, Connor's a great guy, a lot of different skill sets, including the ability to phase through walls on command. If I can get the clip right here, there it is. This portal will trigger a future conversation we need to set up, so we're just gonna God, do that now. Dark monster. Was neither flesh nor blood. We don't see the cutscene, but he got his butt kicked by an evil shadow ghost, and he now needs to uh, talk to a wizard about how badly he got his butt kicked and what he can do to help. Come closer, lad. Here Hello? is said wizard. Well, um, he talks Return way to to too much, further. so we're gonna. Oops. We're gonna do some other stuff while he's chattering. Um, Basically, we need to chat with him, ah, I see. ignore him, with you. and then you click on him first. as we do a long jump away. Let me see if I can cue this up correctly. Ah, I see you have seen fit. Well In the meantime, we're just trolling you. an old man. Return when you wish to converse further. There we go. Um, this confuses the game that we run away from the uh, conversation point. If we save and load, we break it even further. And while he is talking and giving us some important ah, plot points, we are going to... to return uh -oh. and finish our previous uh -oh. discussion. As I was saying... <laughs> oh, no. Hello? Hello there. Oh, wait, there so we go. Still alive. <laughs> that happens sometimes. He uh, so. insists on freezing uh, Connor in place, probably as a result. Oops. Okay, this will also happen. Uh, Mask of Eternity likes to break. This is somewhat to be expected. Uh, probably not the first time, uh, but now you know what it's like to run this game. Ah, I see you have seen fit to return and finish our previous discussion. As I was saying... Hello? Hello there! You're still there alive! Come we'll be a little more reserved in. Go. The game doesn't like it when I try and stick Connor's hand through a church wall to grab a candle. Um, we also need some of these mushrooms. Grab them all nice and quick. That went well. Um, we also need a rope and hook from this watermill building over here. Uh, not really into doors, so let's just backflip on top of it. Phase a teensy bit into the wall. Back foot. And one more for good measure. The Mask of Eternity? And all the while, that wizard's telling us about the Mask of Eternity. Something about how it broke and we have to fix it. Uh, who cares? Let's get out of the wall again using our handy dandy uh, freaky camera switching clip here. I'm actually going to pause here for a second. I'm running a little bit behind on my little loop here, and you'll see what I mean in a second. Um, once you get far enough away from the wizard, he will actually freeze in his conversation, uh, which normally is bad if you're on a good pace. I lagged a little behind there. Um, however, if Connor is talking uh, when you pass a certain point, the wizard will keep going. Um, you can also do what I did just now and quit to menu twice, which will also unfreeze the wizard, and he can keep talking about whatever it is he wants to tell us about. So we have a uh, laundry list item. Let's see, two of three. We got the candle, Forgive me, we got the ring. But I will need we have some ring healing mushrooms here. Need to get one more uh, item for a as yet I explained to perform such a uh, magic quest. ring that'll fix but that ghost guy that I we um, didn't see, but Connor's pretty sure he did. Um, 
Anyway, the point of all of that is that the wizard now has to give us a magic map, which triggers a cutscene, which does teleport us all the way back to where we need to be, right here. Also, check out that 1998 graph, 3D graphics. They really went to town with the animation here. I am grateful, sir. My destiny is clear. I shall prevail. Good wizard, I beseech you. Uh, next conversation is uh, Connor explaining that he needs some help to, to get death, to level two of eight. Currently, we're in level one, the Kingdom of, of Daventry. Uh, next level is the Dimension of Death, an Egypt-themed underworld. And we need the wizard's help to get in there. Uh, one last piece of equipment uh, to get is some torch ashes. Um, only reasonable place to find torch ashes is behind a secret waterfall. But where can such be found? Which leads us into Castle Daventry. Actually, disabling the waterfall to get in, that takes too long. Let's just clip. I'm going to wait for the wizard to wrap up his conversation Aye, here. Sir wizard. Twill be done. And into Castle Daventry. For anyone familiar with King's Quest, uh, you're going to be disappointed. There's no this must be Castle uh, King Graham or any of the rest, the or any, you know anyone from the beloved original game is absent. You can see them on the wall here. Con King Graham has a gold hat instead of a blue one. Beyond my reach. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We have the torch ashes. That's all we're here for. Time to go back. All right, now the waterfall entry looks open. That's just a visual inconsistency. They didn't really expect you to be able to get in without removing the waterfall. So we have to clip out again. And this wall takes a little bit longer, a few extra layers of thickness. Good time to explain how these clips work. Uh, this is action adventure genre. It was kind of a new thing for Sierra. They weren't that great at it. And they were kind of learning on the fly. Um, oops, shoot. I had it too. Uh, one thing about uh, switching between first and third person is that if you take one step and you keep switching, Connor takes a little itty bitty baby step. Uh, so baby that the walls don't actually register that a uh, character is going through them. Um, so if you fidget at an angle like so, you can slowly but surely get through the wall here and continue on your merry way. I think there we go. Um, you've probably noticed by now Connor is a terrific athlete. This horizontal 30-foot leap, beyond being a great way to travel, is also going to be critical for two bits of speed tech where we absolutely rely on his Olympian-level leap. He's also a great backflipper, as you can see. He can uh, backflip his own height to land on tiny doors. I have found torch ashes. Will this work? Really an all-around great guy. Twill work wonders. Sir Wizard, I have gained a ring from a noble knight long deceased. Ah, so I'm just giving the wizard some items here so he can that. turn it into a new plot MacGuffin. No, I have obtained a sacred flame from the church. Good work, lad. Good. All three. I promise he told us about this. We just went around for it. Behold, by all the spirits of the light. I always enjoy this uh, big uh, furry goblin guy in the background just trotting along. Theoretically, we are supposed to be killing those guys and running around hacking and slashing. We do a little bit of that later, but much less than the game intended. <laughs> just using every single sound effect on the soundboard. Your hope has been immeasurable. May we meet again in better times. Thank you, wizard. All right, we are nearly done with Daventry here. On to our next uh, environment here, the Dimension of Death. We're going to clip back into that mausoleum. Now that we're equipped with the magic bubbly goldy ring, uh, we can actually load into a new level. You can tell the devs are really excited to have this new uh, 3D engine to play with by this action scene coming up where we get several different shots of this guy exploding. Ho, oh, the magical light worked. The monster is dispelled. 
I have passed through. Tis the dimension of death. All right, quick safety save, because as you've already seen, this game will betray me uh, at a moment's notice. So let's just have a few of these queued up in case it crashes again. I say in case, it probably will. Now we're gonna leap over this little corner here. There's a big cutscene that triggers if you go the normal way. We're gonna let the skeleton hit us. Um, aggro in this game's kind of weird. Most people, enemies, will leave you alone if you run away from them. But if they get a taste for Connor blood, they are absolutely rabid about chasing you down. I do need these skeletons for one trick coming up. Normally you do a big, annoying, long-winded puzzle to get the key to this big grate here. Great gate. Uh, we can just backflip on a skeleton head if I queue it up right. Oops. There we go. Um, hop over that and be on our merry way. And because we're not really getting hit by these other skeletons, you can hear them clicking and clacking in the background, but they eventually get sick of chasing us and go back to their original spots. The Dimension of Death, probably the most popular place to rage quit and never touch the game again. Uh, giant maze of, uh, well, these angry skeletons, sandstone, and the river Styx blocking your way, forcing you to actually complete the game proper. Um, however, as I already stated, we do have Connor's mega super duper long jump, uh, and we do have a few bits of uh, tiles here that normally should kill us instantly, but here on the end they don't seem to register and we can just get to the end of the level. Uh, normally, if you have done this properly, this mini-map parchment is all the way filled out, but we only need a little bit of it. So that is the longest level reduced to about two minutes. We're in and out and on to the swamp. I feel like the concept art for the loading screens, um, I did too as a child playing this game when the load times were comically long. Uh, removing and loading levels directly onto your hard drive, hard drive each time took ages. So here we are in the swamp. We need to grab a plot MacGuffin to get to the next part of this level. We're going to ignore the great Deku tree here. He has nothing helpful to say. <clears throat> We grabbed those mushrooms back in Daventry because that green water over there is poisonous and we don't uh, want to die. So we do have a few mushrooms to tide us over there. Very excited that I hopped on that guy's head to get here. A little bit of speed tech, but mostly I just like it for swag. And again, the rope and hook, a uh, popular mode of travel for any kind of upwards mobility in this game. We're only gonna use the rope and hook three times. You normally use it a lot more, but there's really only limited use for the speed run, but we can't ignore it entirely. So we're cutting out a bit of exposition here, but basically a swamp witch has poisoned the swamp. No one really cares for that, so we have to unpoison it. Someone put a golden ladle in behind this door, so we're gonna go pick it up. Doors work a little bit differently than walls. Uh, figure that one out. For some reason, uh, I have to shuffle an itty bit to the right instead of an itty bit to the left. And that's actually a pretty good time for me. Normally, I really struggle with that door. Um, this weird black worm water would normally kill me if I fell off like I just did, but because we went through the cheater's way, none of the deadly traps in this room have activated except those two guys and they're slow. Instead of clipping back out, we're just gonna click on the door, trigger this cutscene where Connor figures out that hands are different sizes and we are back at the original spot. All right, again, safety save. Uh, one, because crash, two, because I am gonna do a quick little fall damage cancel trick here and if I mess it up, I don't wanna lose a lot of time. Uh, normally, I have to take the rope and hook down slow, but uh, equipping and unequipping a weapon, in this case, uh, Connor's fists, because we haven't actually picked up a weapon, will uh, confuse the game and prevent you from getting deadly fall down damage. Use it a few more times in the run, very handy. 
The other thing about this game is it is uh, something of a light RPG. That red bar at the bottom is our health, the green is experience. Um, for some reason, and you can do this if you pick up the game today, levels like 8 through 13 get a little confused, and uh, you have this full skill bar that can be triggered just by chowing down on some healing items, in this case our mushrooms. Not me, witch. You. Again, we're supposed to kill the witch. It's, it seems needlessly violent. Let's just uh, skip that and uh, use her golden ladle on a cauldron that you can't quite see, but I promise it's there. Let's see where. I need to get a little closer here. I've never been great at this particular trick. There we go. It's a magic cauldron, uh, don't look too much into it, but using the magic later on the magic cauldron unpoisons the swamp. Magic. It is a wondrous magic. And this is King Mudge. I love King Mudge. Karn's gonna go out to greet him, but we never open the door, so we just get kind of stuck. Greetings, champion eternal. Who are you, sir? Snail? So King Mudge here is going to congratulate us on killing the Swamp Witch, which leads me to believe he doesn't have eyes because she's right there. Um, Cutscene is unavoidable. Um, good time to explain uh, how this game fits into the larger King's Quest uh, point-and-click adventure game series, namely in that it really doesn't. Um, <clears throat> this game came out in the late 90s. It uh, kind of lost vision and became this action adventure hack and slash thing. Uh, the original King's Quest designer, Roberta Williams, basically disavows <laughs> any work on this game. She did not like how it turned out. Um, now they did fans. Fans really wanted another point and click game. They got this. They were none too pleased. Um, on its in its own right as an action adventure game, it was okay. Uh, but now it's a lot of little quirks that have not aged well. It is, however, a fantastic speedrun. Anyway, King Mudge is so happy that we unpoisoned the swamp. He's going to create a whirlpool that takes us to uh, mine or something. Uh, it's a neat skill. Now, modern optimization says I should just clip through that wall and into the whirlpool, but I want to do the old way of doing it because I think it's funny. Uh, we are going to go to the second floor of this... Uh, which castle do a safety save in case I critically uh, screw this up. Um, see the whirlpool down there, and we are just going to yeet thyself in it. That thunk you just heard was Connor dying. Fortunately, the next level trigger um, supersedes that, and Connor should be just fine when he comes out the other end. Yeah, play this game, you would swear that they just slapped King's Quest on this the end after the making it, nose. but I don't think that's actually how it went. I think they were actually trying to make a true blue King's Quest, and they uh, they came up with this. All right, saving here again, because so far our wall clips have just been to get in and out of buildings, get little items, things like that. We are now getting out of bounds. Um, Apologi apologies, you probably can't see much. Um, welcome to Speedrun ASMR. You can hear Connor's various pitter-patter of his feet. Uh, I have the mini-map down there in the bottom right. You can get a sense of what's going on. Um, <clears throat> this is, however, the quickest way uh, to our next plot MacGuffin. Again, most of these levels in the Speedrun can be boiled down to skip a bunch of... Um, combat and side quests, get the relevant magic item, and once you have that magic item, it usually triggers the end of the level. <clears throat> Saving here, because we're going to get a little, little technical, um, clipping again into a wall, but we have to do this twice. We have to clip into the wall and then clip into the side wall here. Uh, basically skirt along the edges of this room. The reason for that is there is a big deadly uh, dragon worm thing. You can probably hear it slithering around. And um, 
We could probably kill under normal circumstances, but it's too dark in here. Connor would comment as such uh, if we let that scene bite him. So we have to avoid him. Plus, this way skips an incredibly long uh, and very boring cutscene. So uh, even though it always makes me hyper nervous to pull this off, we're going to keep doing it. Baby steps. He just smacked into a candle on the other side. Sometimes that can be deadly as he bonks into it, loses his footing and falls off into the edge here. And then we have one more double clip again, first into the wall and then into the next wall over. If you have no idea what's going on, trust me, I barely do as well. Um, I'm mostly just doing this on feel. And there we go, back into the level proper. It is too dark, I cannot see. Now we can't see. When you clip through these bricks, normally you have a big Indiana Jones style boulder to knock those down, but we didn't get that far. Um, we're going to try to avoid these bat manta rays that also have electricity powers. And figure that one out. Um, great new Pokemon idea if anyone ever wants to try that. I'm going to kill these two. They tend to get in the way later. And who doesn't love watching our protagonist punch a wing off a bat? We have some arbitrary rock timing test here. You'd think it might be tempting to one cycle these. I guarantee that'll end badly. They're almost perfectly designed to prevent me from doing that. Again, don't have to kill the rock guy, but he gets annoying later, so let's just do it now. Oh, no. This gnome's going to explain what we have to do, what magic McGuffin we have to get. We already got it. Period. He Here it is. Was a found. magical lodestone. Uh, we skip over the conversation here. Something about knocking the earth off its axis a teeny bit. Who cares? Ha! Wait, mortal. We must explain. Nah, you don't have to explain. All we know now is that our magic map can now teleport us to the next level. We just have to find the relevant portal. Right. Again, doing a safety save because we do have to go back into the Gnome Negaverse here um, as a shortcut. And this part is especially platforming in a game that doesn't like precision jumping. All right, so we have our clip, leap out, barely land on the uh, platform there. That was close. Um, then we have one more very tricky long jump. I am lining it up with a combination of the mini map and then some fine tuning of the first person camera. That should work. Famous last words. Let's save before we do this. You can't see it. There is a chunk at the end here that we can land on if we jump at just the right time. Yes, all right. All right, marathon great. Got that first try. Everything else is whatever. Um, clip back into the level. We are done with the Negaverse. And we are on our merry way. Gonna save again because I don't want to do that jump again, but we also have an added little trick here where some zombies pop up to attack me. They're not very tough, but um, for marathon safety, I'm gonna do the save load thing where uh, I despawn them just so we can keep moving. So at this point, we are running out of creative ideas for levels. We've already done mine. Um, now we're on to fire level. Alas, in what scorching light! Pick up a few of these healing crystals for marathon safety. Um, I haven't talked a lot about our little task bar here at the bottom. This is our uh, adventure, action adventure RPG, RPG mechanic, um, something not present in the original King's Quest games, which were not combat focused. Um, you see our armor, our little light tunic, we haven't picked up any armor, our fists because we haven't actually picked up any weapons, and that other box is for a ranged weapon, which we actually will be getting shortly. Um, these empty item slots are all various potions, things like that. The mushrooms and crystals heal you, as well as two other items we'll be getting. Um, we're at the part of the game where stuff starts doing pretty big damage to us, and we want to not die, so we'll start picking up a few items here. Hey, rat. You're in a trap. 
There's a dwarf fortress, a fire dwarf fortress to be exact. We're gonna punch this guy to death, and also his buddy. In addition to being a terrific athlete, Connor also has uh, fists of just pure devastation. In fact, the fists, uh, no joke, are probably the deadliest weapon in this game. Uh, except maybe um, the final end game sword. The reason for this is because, again, uh, developer never really made an action adventure before. So simply put, they made a bunch of weapons that do higher attack values, but they didn't really think much about attack animation. In first person, the fists have basically no attack animation there. It's nigh instant, which means even though it is the lowest damage weapon in the game, uh, you get to throw a lot of punches and it almost and it adds up and it's just much better than the vast majority of weapons in this game. It's delightful. All right. <clears throat> I talked over it, but we went out of bounds walked on some lava don't worry about it um we now have to do another clip into this wall but only sorta um i don't want to tick off this dwarf fella um i just want to squeeze connor's face through the wall do this puzzle get this little steam cap thing there's one more we need it's behind this uh cell door but if you just click through the bars you can get it so up until now, the point of our quest has been to uh, com recombine the pieces of the Mask of Eternity, that thing. Uh, we've not been doing that. Um, there was one piece in the swamp that we just straight up ignored because the game, for whatever reason, doesn't count it. Uh, but most of them are in these little Zelda-style uh, chests here, so we're going to pick up our first one now. Oh, a piece of the mask. These weird goo guys come after you every time you pick one up. Um, I don't want to fight him. It's a waste of time. Just ignore him. We're going to instead leave him to his merry way. He doesn't follow you. And clip on out to the end uh, of the level, which is a steam elevator. And I am going to save here because there is a better than average chance that the game is going to decide not to work and kill the run. The estimate prepares for this contingency, I think, pretty well. Um, if you pull up this camera tutorial, you can still do stuff and... Whoop. Hello? There we go. This guy's about to murder me, but we can just swing the camera over to this button. Oh, good, it worked. Whew. Sometimes that button does not register and it's just the worst thing in the world. This so we had the quintessential fire shore. level, now we're on to the quintessential ice level. I'm gonna save here, we're doing another fall damage cancel, and this one's a little more dangerous than the others. Got it. Wonderful. Um, this is an icy river, very painful. You can hear Connor screaming over there. Um, taking a very particular route through this uh, water. Some of these water tiles will insta-kill you. Uh, you probably can't see it on stream, but a few of them are slightly lighter in color, and those ones are the insta-deadly ones we want to avoid. Normally, we have to free a lady, get a magic scepter, ride an ice dragon. All boring stuff. We just want to get to where we want to go, right? We're going to hop over to uh, not the end of the level. We're going to have to pick up another mask piece. Excuse me, Ice Yeti. Uh, in a Ice Orc Citadel. Coming up right here. I know the draw distance on this game is... Uh, uh, could be better. Um, one of these guys is kind of a pest. I'm just going to kill him real quick. That should be enough. Nope. A few more. There we go. We'll get to that guy later. Gonna jump at the same time you hear that crossbow twang. That's a pretty surefire way of avoiding those projectiles. Use our rope and hook for the last time. We have to get up on this roof. Ah. 
we are going to deliberately walk around that grate in the ceiling uh, and avoid a very long cutscene. We need to free an eagle guy. Hello, eagle guy. I don't want to talk to him again. He takes forever. We do need the key, though, which is on this fella here. I'm not going to talk for this part. It's amazing. Amazing. The Foley artist for this game really <laughs> went all out. That was another thing about this game when it came out. It, uh, it kind of took a lot of people by surprise. King's Quest can get dark as a series, but it never had uh, neck snapping of orcs or um, punching various enemies' heads off, stuff like that. So that, needless to say, got a bit of mixed reviews. I don't want to get all the way back up there. Um, normally you do have the rope and hook back up here to use the key and free this guy. Instead, I'm just going to clip into the wall here move the camera up until the keyhole here and just use it like so. Thank you, brave knight. Now I must return to my flock and bring them to order. I, your majesty. You do that. That was Bill Farmer, the uh, voice of Goofy. Um, this game has a few people like that, just like weirdly talented individuals who all signed up for this game back in the day. Another great die-hard-esque moment. Oh, oh, right through the chest. Prepare to die, mortal! Not me. You, Thork. So that's Thork. Thork the Orc. Uh, I don't really want to fight him. Oops. Let's not die, though. We're just going to keep moving here. It is a bad place for such a wide gap. It sure is. Um, that is our cue that we're supposed to do a puzzle. This is very reminiscent of the old, old days, a very kind of wonky moon logic sort of thing. I have an Oh, idea. Thork, what are you doing? What are you doing? Get away. Thork? Thork? Thork is usually pretty mild-mannered, but he's got it out for me today. Just let me do my puzzle, Sork. Aha! Success. Okay, he's gone. He's gone back to... Gone back to his Sorkly duties over there. Hi, it worked. I hope to not break. The one problem with the speedrun is we miss a lot of really wonderful moments like that from Connor where he just says something completely ridiculous and the animation tries its best to keep up with it, but sometimes the timing is just mwah, comedic. Again, fully 3D, does we're excited. Let's just have him punch that guy three times from three different camera angles. Anyway, this is the last mask piece we're picking up. There are two more we're supposed to get, but we don't we don't need them. Another mask piece. I see in chat you're sensing a pattern with the way that Connor insults people. The mask belongs to my master. It will not aid you. It will not aid you either. <laughs> Connor grew up with the I am rubber, you are glue approach to, to insults. Anyway, again, I don't want to fight that guy. Let's just clip out and be on our way. We have what we came for. Let's just go to the end of the level. Again, the Ice Yetis. Very slowly coming to kill me. Pretty easy to avoid. I am going to save a little bit closer to the next clip. Um, not a terribly hard clip, but if I do mess it up, you do get Yeti Swarm, which can be pretty embarrassing. I do like that I don't kill any Yetis during this run. I always feel bad about that when I play it casually. They seem okay. They're probably just upset that I'm here, you know, invading their territory and all that. Some of you may have noticed a very cool looking blue hydra up there. No, we're not going to fight it. We're just going to clip through its little lair here and be on our way. Couldn't kill it if I wanted to. We need a flame sword. Uh, a flame sword I am unwilling to go get. Guarded by an invisible snow leopard or something. I don't know. 
Uh, so we're just going to clip out of bounds and then clip back into the level past said Hydra and move on to a kind of mid-level called Paradise Lost. Teeny tiny level, uh, really its only purpose is to check that you have enough mask pieces and then it will again yeet you to the uh, final level. For whatever reason, it does not count that mask piece in the swamp that we ignored, so we can just get on by off the ones we do have. Hail champion eternal. Thou hast completed thy worldly task. Oh, terrific. Thou art now prepared for entry to the realm Let's of the Let's see if the game sun. crashes here. <laughs> Behold. We're about to see some quick time video. Woo! High tech. We are now at the realm of the sun, the final end game temple broken up into three smaller levels and again we have one last action cinematic kill it's a good thing this game mate was came out before quick time events because you can almost see them uh <laughs> if they had a mind to put them in press x to shoot by my oath am i really here in the realm of the sun you sure are Going to save? Very easy for me to do this badly and die. Oh, hand over the mask. Die! Uh. Oops, yeah, case in point. These uh, Medusa heads especially are deadly. In fact, they killed me right there. Connor just wanted to finish his cool backflip. Those water snakes are also a uh, famous run killer. Oh. This is why I got the safety crystals and just make this bit a little bit more friendly in a marathon setting. I'll be totally honest, we've never had a great grip on how to avoid those Medusa heads. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Anyway, worst part of that's over. The rest of these guys can hurt you, but it's not a huge deal. Grab a quick healing item behind that wall. What is the power of truth? Why is this game 15 FPS I with modern hardware? Uh, I shall seek it. Great question. It's uh, a miracle enough that we can get this game to run at all. Um, it's already crashed once, and uh, um, that's pretty normal. It used to crash a lot more. Uh, David's bringing up virtual hide light. I mean, that is always what I compare it to. Is like at least it's not that. Um, so we're, always, we're supposed to do these kind of like uh, last crusade style um, trials of worthiness. Um, as you may have noticed, we're not going to do that. We're just going to go through all these talking doors and clip through them the old-fashioned way. The light. I shall seek the answer. This game at least looks better than virtual hide light. For the time, it actually was pretty sharp. Nowadays, Karnas is kind of a funny and weirdly proportionate beefcake. I always struggle a little bit with the doors. Um, you kind of have to reverse your muscle memory for the clips. Um, I talked about it earlier, but for a wall, you do your little scoot and shift to the left. For doors, it's really only going to work if you shuffle to the right. There we go. One more of those to go. This level has basically no enemies, so it's just one last little thing for us to hop through. Straight on to our final boss room. Speak thou of order. I know not how, yet. And you never will. Let's see if we can do our one last freaky camera clip of the night. There we go. And on to the final room. Why, well, yes, there is one more door. Are we going to clip through it? Kind of, sort of. Just backflip over it. They forgot to put collision on that top bit. Good thing they did, too, by clipping through that door instead of going through the normal way. 
we avoid a long villain monologue, which also sets up this whole big wall of fire throughout the room. That is important because Fighting this guy one on one is a recipe for disaster in our underlevel state. But because there's no wall of fire preventing us from getting up right behind him, we can just smack the back of his head, and he was never programmed to deal with attacks from behind. So we're just gonna start platinum that guy into oblivion so we can keep putting the mask together. What about those two mask pieces we didn't get? Don't worry about it. Game assumes you should have them if you're in here, so they'll just give them to us. Yeah, the hitbox here is totally nuts. I can even punch him all the way from over here if I so deign, which is slightly optimal in the PB uh, attempt setting. That visor that keeps popping up, that is um, part of some end game armor that we, of course, did not get. Um, the game is confused by this. It should not be possible for you to be in this room without the armor. So it just adds some of the little visual cues during cutscenes. You'll see this again in a moment when Connor pulls out a sword he also does not have. <laughs> it's a great sword too, which we had after this last bit. All right, we have now assembled our Mask of Eternity. Which will now trigger uh, our final little bout here. Time will end when I punch this dude into the portal. The mask. It will not shield me, puny cur. And so you think. Now we'll not Tragically, though, at the very end this. of the run, we do have a bit of RNG. Um, sometimes punching this guy into the portal. Uh, he just refuses to go in. So let's see if we get this first try for it takes a few times. Yeah, so that's a great example. Um, we need him to get knocked back at least once for it to be viable. Oh, he does not want to play ball today. All right. Usually it's the second one he has more trouble with. Okay. There we go. And time. Well, my timer stopped working, but hey, 41, that's not too bad for time with loads. We've defeated our evil bad guy that we barely know anything about. Connor's now fully decked out in plot armor. And we get our end credit sequence. Thank you, thank you. Um, I like to riff on this game. Um, I actually think the developers did a great job under the circumstances. Um, everything we know about that dev cycle, it was brutal. Uh, so the fact that they did make a complete game uh, that isn't half bad is pretty impressive. So congrats to Sierra for that. Anyway, people are no longer rocks. Uh, some electric water is flowing, I don't know. Uh, this is really nice one, nice butterfly. Some guys pop out of the mask. They're very happy for us. The end. All right. Thank you all for hanging out with me on that uh, uh, peculiar little speed run there. I really appreciate it. Really glad to be a part of this event. It's been a lot of fun so far. I do like the end credits music. It's a bit of a bop. If anyone wants to join us in the speed train of this game, um, that's very brave of you. Thank you. Uh, you can find us on a uh, KQ speedrunning Discord. Um, we're also happy to help anyone who just wants to play it casually and get this running. It's a whole tricky thing, uh, but we do have ways of getting this to run a modern uh, setup, so uh, happy to help with that if anyone's truly interested in uh, taking a dive down the uh, virtual hide lied realm of adventure game genre.
Let's see who you guys have next. I think it's a uh, tech hour with the team. Oh no, true crime New York City. Okay, that's just a delightful run. It's gonna be exciting. Yeah, we have the uh, the series, <laughs> the uh, the games that killed series block here. King's Quest VIII, True Crime New York City, and here you can see the pitiful amount of points we scored. Um, not that you can track it in game; it's very weird. They only show you this at the very end. All right. Well, thank you all for uh, hanging out with me today. We'll kick things over as soon as the team's ready here.